Hey there everyone, this is Jeremy, the Music Andy, joining you today as a strawberry or an apple, and I'm here today to talk about Yod Wave from your old Droog. From Brooklyn, New York, Droog is releasing his 12th studio album. He has two guest features on this, The God Fahim and Makami. The two features I am in knowledge of, I've listened to Makami a lot, especially the last album that came out, Balance Cho, The God Fahim. I've heard featured on other songs, but never listened to his own discography. But Your Old Droog is a name that I've never even heard of. I've never seen guest features. I've never heard the music from the man. And when I hear the name Your Old Droog, the only thing I know of a Droog is from Clockwork Orange. But enough rambling. Let's dive straight into this album. It's seven songs long. It's 19 minutes in length, it's very quick, so I'll try to keep this review as quick as it. This album, like most East Coast hip hop albums, is heavy on the grit. It has that boom bap style on the beats, the drums, and it has storytelling and very introspective thoughts about what it takes to get out of struggle, to hustle your way through, and to never return back to the same place that you were once. This is an album that is definitely heavily focused on the lyrics. It's a conscious hip hop album you are going to spend a lot of the time listening to storytelling, listening to wordplay, listening to clever flexes that Drew has to offer. And at the downside of this, the beats aren't as robust, they're not as polished, but that's not saying that these beats are bad at all. The production is very nice and it's very clean on this. It's just that the beats are not the standout point of the album. Fila Crudy is a nice opener. It doesn't really have anything going on too much with storytelling. The beat's pretty simple. It's a simple walk down piano with a one tone bass, just kind of keeping the backdrop going. It has one of the funniest lines on this that Drew says that he makes music for people that check their email in the club. The song is just classic, clever wordplay, quick witty flexes, and just staying true to yourself. Nothing too crazy going on here. Scooby Snacks is a track that didn't really catch my attention the first go around. Each listen that I did, I kind of listened more and more to the lyrics. There's a lot of joke cracking in this. Drew is hilarious all over this track. There's a feature of Makami singing kind of off key. It doesn't really do much for me, but in the nature of the song, which is just a fun song, joking along, you know, flexes all around, it fits in key with it because everybody's just having fun on this track. I will say I did not like the chipmunk soul samples that were featured on this. It's something that really is kind of hit or miss for me. And for this song in particular, it really wasn't a hit, but that's okay. I still enjoy this song overall. 500 is the next track on this and it's probably my favorite track on this. It has those sad, uh, slow strings that Drew mentions wanting to rap over uh, in the storytelling that's going on in this. And it's, you know, it's a nice callback to it. It really paints the picture for me. Drew talks about dropping out of the ninth grade, having no skills for a job, no future in sight. He's not living the life of an average kid, being able to be carefree. But all of these things, all these challenges were a prerequisite to get into the life that he's currently being able to enjoy now. To achieve success in life, you either need to be born with it or you need to see the bottom to crawl out of it, to know how bad it really can be, to never want to go back and to just keep getting more and more successful. Drew talks about feeling alienated from the world, walking these busy streets but feeling so alone, uh, not being able to get words out. And it's nice to see that he turned into a rapper and he has turned his livelihood into getting these words out. It's definitely very inspiring. It really keeps me motivated. I understand what he's saying. I definitely do not struggle as much as he did, judging from these stories that I'm hearing on this album. But still, we all have our struggles and I absolutely understand and respect the hustle that he has on this. If Purple Rain Freestyle truly is a freestyle, this is a fantastic song. And even if it's not, it's still a fantastic song. It's clever on the hook. There's a bunch of quick flexes. There's a lot of wordplay. Again, I know I'm saying the same thing a lot, but he is very clever. He's good at sentence structuring, ending with a certain word and matching it with another to make this kind of smooth transition with the flow. I just love what he's doing on this track. My childhood is like a computer with no mouse. I never had the right clicks. Wasn't afraid to break them off like Twix. Come on, that's fantastic. 
Plate the cut like Neil Sporn. You soft like Trey Songs and Neil Warren. You don't watch the news. Use a goofy. You probably thought a minority whip was a hoopty. These are all fantastic. These are hilarious. And I just love Drew's writing on this album. Black and Red Hirachis is the next track. And this one has the god Fahim on it. Fahim is very strict to the beat. He's really dancing over top of it, matching each bass note, each kick that's going on, not really separating himself from the rhythm at all. And he's a very nice contrast because Droog is very low, direct, commanding. Fahim's a little bit more eccentric, a little bit quirkier, a little goofier, a little bit more higher pitch. It's just a nice contrast. This beat is probably one of the most interesting ones that are on this album. The synth are kind of having this little bit of a psychedelic feel and the keys almost have a church feel to it. The main beat is super loose. It's elastic. Both of these MCs are bouncing off of it. It's a great song. The flows are great. The direct attitude is great. The leading nature of it is great. It's in contention with 500 for my favorite track, but it's going to stay my second favorite track on this album. Lost Love is exactly what the name implies on this. Drew has regret for losing a loved one in his life. He didn't appreciate what he had. He knows that he's in the wrong. He understands that he was trying to put on the front and act a different way when the person was really in love with him and just wanted him to be himself. And he was never able to accept himself, so he couldn't be himself for this person. Seeing each other from daily to weekly to monthly, thinking that that was good enough, and then ultimately being played in the end. Drew definitely gets a little bit of a tear jerk song on this one. It's nothing too crazy, pretty simple on the bars. The chipmunk uh, soul samples in the background, again, are a little bit more tasteful this time, but again, they're not my favorite. But at least they match the song's feeling on it. Body Right, Mind Right is the next track on this one. And it is telling you that you can't really trust anybody in, li in life. If somebody is going right, sometimes you have to make a left. You got to put yourself first. You got to tuck your chin. You got to come out swinging. And you just have to take on what life has to offer for you. And then even throughout while you're doing all of this, you have to remain humble and you have to stay hungry. Because again, you could fall back into failure. Success is a constant thing. You have to keep going at it you have to keep adding on to it and drew is not wanting to stop anytime soon it's a great closer i wish it was a little bit more personal i wish a lot of the songs that were a little bit more free were a little bit more personal because i like when drew gets personal and i like when he opens up and gets emotional because i feel like that's when some of his best writing comes out quick album like i said i wish that it was longer i wish that it was a little bit more personal i wish the beats weren't as simple as minimal but they really didn't need to be on this album because it was more of a conscious hip-hop album talking about storytelling wanting you to focus more on the lyrics of it still though like i said the production is nice on this it is rugged it's clean it's pretty at times and it just has a lot to offer but in a more minimal way i'm gonna go 7.6 McDonald's out of 10 on this one. What did you think of this album? What albums would you like me to review in the future? Please leave a comment below and let me know. Subscribe if you like the content, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you.